everyone can hear me, and if not, use your imagination. Uh, so yeah, uh, my name's Dave Stevens. I am here from uh, Zappos, hence the oversized logo behind me there. And I uh, just wanted to talk to you about um, using Happy plugins to version your API. And try not to have this fall off my ear while I do it. Uh, so quick thing on me, because I'm, I'm not famous, as you may have noticed. Um, started using Node back in 2010. I'm just going to hold this down here because it's flying all around. <laughs> there you go. You get it done. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. You just start talking. Okay, cool. Uh, and first used Happy at the end of last year uh, on a personal recommendation of a friend. And we actually managed to get uh, something into uh, customer-facing production at the end of last year in an A-B test for 6pm.com, the mobile views, which is our sister site. And we have Happy 8 in production today on an internal analytics API. Um, not quite Black Friday at Walmart, but we're doing our best. Uh, so quick project setup for what I'm going to go through. Um, I'll keep this brief. Um, I wrote up a big long post about how I like to organize happy plugins. Um, that bit.ly uh, URL will take you there if you would like to know why I've structured it in this way. Um, but we've got this one um, controller which is going to give us information about our API, the info controller. Uh, and our main application uh, just uses glue because I like the compose uh, functionality uh, that got removed in version 8 uh, to set up a server and run it on port 9000, pulling in um, the info um, module as a plugin. Uh, that plugin looks like this, very simple. Um, it captures the root of uh, slash version and uh, has a handler there, uh, which we'll look at next. And it just replies back with uh, the name of the API, the example API, and uh, a, s a version number, which is one in this instance, okay? So once that's running, this curl request will um, return back this JSON response, uh, which is very exciting. I know you're all dying for me to push this live, but unfortunately, it is just an example. Uh, but now we've got to the point where everyone was so excited by it, uh, we want to go on to version 2 and improve it because it you know, didn't do too much. Uh, and we're going to introduce some breaking changes, but we're going to be good net citizens. We're not going to break the uh, previous calls for anyone that is relying on it, and we're going to um, version our API. So before, in the modules section, we just had an index.js, um, and then this version handler, which itself had an index.js. Um, we're now going to uh, break this down into version 1 and version 2 of our API. Um, first thing we're going to do, we're going to take the current version handler and we're going to move that to version 1. The idea here being that um, version 1 is the one that was already there. So uh, this will then become your default as well. So anyone that doesn't update their code um, will later uh, receive this and uh, achieving that just by moving it into that folder. Version 2 gets really fancy, um, almost as big of an announcement as happy version 8 today, uh, is that we now uh, give you a status code and we, we have our breaking change. Instead of the name and the version being um, directly ahead in, uh, in the response object, we now have this application detail um, object. Uh, so then when we move over to our version handler, um, this is where we're going to start uh, looking at the versioning. Okay? So uh, what we first of all do is we check to see whether um, an API version parameter has been set in, in the route. And we do a quick test to make sure that it just matches the V and then a number um, format with the regular expression just for security purposes, never trust anything the user puts in. Um, and then we require uh, the um, local folder that matches that version number uh, here, and we pass through the request and the reply. Um, below that, we have our default fallback, as I mentioned before, which says uh, if no version is specified, give them version 1, because that's what they'll be expecting. Uh, the info plugin, we now have uh, a slight change. We've added in another route, which has the API version specified. 
and uh, that's the only change that we do there. We leave version still pointing to this this version handler that we just saw. Um, so once we have this uh, set up, like so, um, testing on this URL parameter, uh, if we curl as we did before, we get the same response, so we're not breaking anything for anybody else. Uh, but if we put in v1 as our API version parameter, um, again, we get the same response because the default is version 1. But then we change it to version 2, and now our response is from the, the other handler. Um, when I was looking into versioning APIs, there's a really good article by um, Troy Hunt, uh, if you're familiar with him, uh, on the three wrong ways, because no matter which one you choose and you say, I'm going to version my API this way, somebody has a, a complaint about it. So if you, I've, I've done a bit of the URL so you can look up that article if you're interested. Um, he describes the, the three different ways that he likes to version APIs. Uh, the first we've already covered, but then they should actually say custom request header, but um, Everything's about customer where I work, so uh, apparently I just typed customer while I was making this. Um, so we're going to add in the ability to handle a custom uh, request header that we've specified, API-version, um, as a way to specify which version of the API we want the request to, come, uh, to be handled with. Uh, and that gets ha this uh, happens here in uh, the second piece, where again we test to make sure that it's uh, nothing malicious coming in, and then again we re uh, re require um, from the folder that matches uh, the version that's passed in. Uh, so here we are, uh, a curl to test it because doing things old school is the way I like to do everything. Um, and we get that, that version 1 back. If we pass in version 2, then the response is from the second um, iteration that we came up with for our fancy handler. Um, but you'll notice that the URL uh, in both of those stays the same. Uh, then the third uh, method he suggests is the uh, specifying the accept header with uh, the application and then the vendor uh, in there which um, we can again test on in a similar manner and then require based on um, the value that gets passed in. Uh, so again, this is what it may look like for the example API uh, company name. I, I don't have a startup. You might have noticed I'm not very good at naming things. Um, this is uh, an example of that as much as it is an example of the API. Uh, so you pass in v1 and you get the, the first response, and you pass in v2 and you get the second response. Um, if you can imagine here we've got this um, setup that I showed earlier where we just have these folders based in different places. This is a very small application, so that works out quite well. Um, if you can imagine in a larger application or in a large company where you have different teams doing different things, um, each folder could actually be its own um, NPM module on a private repo or a, um, even the public one if that works for you. you know, uh, devil may care and all that. Uh, which could then have its own repository uh, so everyone could work independently and then you can just say, um, okay, in this folder I want to pull in this version of um, that controller uh, in this folder, I want to pull in uh, the next. Uh, so finally, I'll go all the way back through to the end. Um, these are the various ways you can contact me if you um, are so inclined. Um, trying to put out as much as we've learned on Happy uh, uh, on Medium at the moment. So if you follow Twitter, you'll see those. Um, and then also at the bottom there is a repos uh, repository with the example application for you to try out for yourself if you want to play around with it. Um, also the slides from today if you were just blown away by those. And finally, uh, the concept of um, doing that testing on the three different ways you can version your API. Um, I wasn't very hungry at lunch, so I turned that into a plugin itself. So as soon as I've come up with a cool name for it, which as I said I struggle with, um, I'll publish that and share that around as well. Thank you.